So today I wanna to talk to you all about my color grading process with my Sony FX3 in Premiere Pro. A lot of people have been asking how do I color grade my videos, and so I wanted to show you all what that process looked like when it's even pertaining to my YouTube videos, because essentially the same process that I use for my YouTube videos, I use for any other video that I'm going to be color correcting or color grading. So let's get into it. So we are here in Premiere. The first thing that I want you to do is create an adjustment layer because that's what we're gonna use for our color. We're not gonna put it on the clip because I want you all to get used to creating an adjustment layer and putting your color on the adjustment layer. I titled my adjustment layer color. The next thing that you wanna do is open up your elementary scopes. I like to use vector scope, which shows you pretty much all of your colors and then you know how much of those colors are in your clip and not just that this is going to be where we focus on the skin tone or we focus on like the skin the color and making sure we get that correct you have your rgb as well as your numbers that let you know if you're peaking or if you're crushing if you're peaking your whites or if you're crushing your blacks and then we have our waveform i don't focus too much on the waveform but i think it's always good to have up as well the next thing that you want to do is make sure that you go to your lumetri color panel now this is a key tip that i like to tell people if you go to your lumetri color panel you see your basic correction, your creative, your curves, color wheels and match, secondary, and your vignette. These are the steps that you would take to color, literally. So don't think like I got to go here first. No, follow the steps that Premiere gives you, kind of giving you a cheat code and color in that way. And that's what we're going to do today. So first and foremost, we're going to open up our basic correction. Now with that, you want to input your foundational Rec 709 LUT, and then you want to do your basic correction to, you know, whether it's to fix your white balance, whether it's to fix your exposure, or like your lighting, anything like that, you're going to do in basic correction. So first thing we're going to do is browse, and we're going to find our base foundational Rec 709 LUT. Now I like to use the LUTs that come on Sony's website because I've tried a lot of LUTs, and these have been the best for me so far. Um, as you can see, I have Phantom. I have a lot of LUTs, but I don't know. It's just something about the Sony LUTs that come very, very nicely. So I use this S-Log3 S-Gamut 3 Cine to LC 709, and sometimes I might use the Type A. The only difference between the two is the Type A isn't as contrast. So I like contrast, so I like to go with the standard. Now, you can kind of see it already gave us a good foundational LUT to start to color off of. Now, let's take that away. And let's say I wanted to go to my Alexa default. That's actually not bad either. So some people like to use Alexa LUTs as well as their base Rec 709 LUT. You can always play with the LUTs that are in Premiere. Like this is a good LUT to start off on too. But for me and what I found, I just, it's a Sony camera. I like to go and use, and all you saw was it just added contrast. So it's not too far off on color from uh, the Sony LUT to the Alexa LUT. Like it's just a contrast thing. So, you know, find the LUTs that work for you. These are Rec 709 LUTs. So these are just the foundational LUTs. From there, we're going to always fix our white balance. Before you start coloring anything, you want to make sure that your white balance is right. So for me, not to brag, but I have really good white teeth. So what I'm going to do is try to find my white balance in that. And boom, that gave us a really good fix. Now, let's say I didn't do my teeth and I did the white wall. That's not bad either, right? So let's just go ahead and do the teeth, the teeth assist. All right, so this gives us a really good, nice foundation and our graphs are looking good. Our scopes are looking good. It does show that we have a lot of cyan and blue happening, a lot of saturation in that, but that's because of my monitor. I have a navy blue back wall in my room and my shirt kind of has some blue to it as well. So right now for exposure and light, we're gonna focus more on the uh, parade. So zero again means that you're crushing your blacks. You don't want to have it all hit zero or go past zero. And your 100 means that you are peaking on your white. So you don't want to go above 100 or be on 100. It's okay if like your blue is on 100. Like as long as it's not like all of it is just going crazy up there, then you're good. Like I think we're in a good space because most of our midtones is like below that. So I think we're pretty good. So what I'm going to do is go into light and kind of figure out how I want this to work. So I'm just going to add a little contrast, bring my shadows, which is a little bit more of my midtones down. Um, I can bring my highlights down and my whites because my whites are going to bring it away from that 100 anyway, which is great. 
And that's it. So after you finish your basic correction, and again, all of this is small. Like, you can do negative five, negative five, negative five. Like, it doesn't have to be too crazy. Like, I'm not going to bring it all the way down. So as you go and you color, just go slow. So after the basic correction, let's go to the next step, creative. Now, the creative was when you're going to actually add that creative LUT. That's when you start color grading. Like, if I wanted to add a creative LUT that I found from somebody else. And then Premiere has their own LUTs that you can go to internally as well before having to use somebody else's LUT. So let's say I wanted to get a film like Fuji fill uh, I could add a creative LUT and go straight in Premiere and use a Fuji e Eterna which a lot of people like to use and then boom I had this really cool creative LUT and I didn't have to do a lot now the thing that people get stuck on is that this does not look natural it looks like somebody threw a LUT on there and that was it so what I like to do is go to either 50% where it feels a little more natural or 25% and that feels like really good but if you really wanted to stand a little bit more, you can go to 50%. And that looks like, boom, like I'm good. Like I feel like this is really great and I can start to check my skin tone, but everything else looks really good to me. I wouldn't have to do any more. So let's just remember this. What we're going to do is take a screenshot. So let's see. Import into the project. Um, we're going to talk color, color grade. All right. So let's just keep this over here because we're going to like – check that in a second so let's go back out and hit none because we're going to actually learn to color grade ourselves we're not going to use any creative LUTs from other people or from adobe we're going to learn to color grade ourselves so we're not going to use this creative we're going to go to curves so now with curves we may or may not need that but essentially you've heard of s curve so you have your highlights your mids and your shadows this is how i make my curve and that mids might be a little too high boom so it's all looking good for me the contrast is looking great now I'm looking a little yellow greenish but we'll fix that in a second but everything else I think is like to T I think it's perfect now we do have some like peaking a little bit over here but it's a neon sign so I'm okay with that so now we're gonna go into our hue versus saturation hue versus hue and hue versus luma now we are always this is where you start to play with your skin tone so we are always going to be between the yellow and maybe the magenta but definitely the yellow and the red doesn't matter the skin tone this is it like this is our color you know beneath our layer <laughs> especially for dark skin tone so what we're going to do is because we know we're between the red and yellow i'm going to already hit my marks between the red and the yellow for both my hue versus hue and hue versus luma so before we do that this is how you check your skin tone. So I'm gonna go to the actual clip and I'm going to draw a triangle. And I'm gonna get rid of that feather. Then I'm gonna go back to my Lumetri scope and see where this is your skin tone line. And you wanna make sure that you're on this line. That lets you know that your skin tone, like all the colors are balanced between the yellow and the red, which is kind of what our like, especially darker skin complexion is. You don't wanna be more towards the yellow because again, you're gonna look like me where it's green and yellowish. And you don't wanna be between the red and magenta because you're gonna look like a Oompa Loompa. So you wanna be more in the middle. So right now we have a little too much yellow going on. And if you were to actually see how I look, you could see that we have too much yellow going on. So what we're going to do is go to our hue versus hue, and we're just going to, like, bring that bad boy up. So now, as you can see, we are – now we have a little bit more red. So the goal is to – the goal is to try to get it right on that line. So let's see. Let's bring it down a little bit. And you just have to remember that – you you don't want to move around too crazy you want to go like take your time and just like not do too much like so let's see let's go about right here boom all right i think that's gonna be as good as we're gonna get so what we're gonna do is go back to that clip and we're gonna take off the mask and boom. Now you see that we're closer to my skin complexion. I got a little bit more brown than I got yellow and green. I don't look too crazy. So after we do that and we have that, we wanna go to Hue versus Luma because this is where you actually bring that complexion back, especially if it's the darker skin tone. So even if I was to add a creative look from somebody else, this is a keynote. Anytime you buy a love from somebody that does not have the same skin complexion as you, 
they you may lose some of your skin complexion because essentially they're coloring based on their skin complexion or whoever they're coloring. So from that, you might lose it. So for me, I like to bring that back. That's when you go to Hue versus Luma. And because our skin tones are between the red and yellow, that's what I made my marks. And if I bring it all the way down, clearly it's crazy. But again, subtle movements. So here, just bring it down just a tad. It's going to make me look like I got a tan, which is what we want. Boom. Just a little bit. So after we feel like we're good with our curves, we look at our elementary scopes and we're still good. We're going to go to color wheels and match. And this is where I start to color grade. Now, in the color wheels is also where you can pretty much do your teal and orange. Um, or if you want to go into like your curves and play around with your RGB curves, you can do that too. Like I can go and make my marks. And in the shadows, I can play around with the shadows. So this is why I kept this picture because I really do want to see if we can get close to this by color grading ourselves. As you learn to color grade yourself, you can go and sell your own LUT. You can go and just be better at being able to color grade, right? So that's what I'm trying to show you all. So what I like to do is get my blues to actually be blue. So this is a navy wall. And I like to get more like a bluer feel because I like to, you know, add my own little thing to make me stand out on my color. So now we actually see a little bit more blue and you can kind of see that the blue is, it, it moved a little. So it's, if you look at the parade, it moved just a tad. So we add a little bit more blue. And if we want, we can bring that shadow just down a little. Now with that, I want to bring my mid-tones up. And here you can also change your mid-tones too. If you feel like that was a little too brown or a little too red, you can go in and start to kind of change that if you want to or correct it. And then for our whites, like our wall, um, you can easily go a little more warm if you choose. Or you can go a little bit more blue. I wanted it to feel more daylight, so I like to go blue. But again, that one's up to you. You can decide how you want your stuff to look. So that is pretty much the vibe that I really, really like. So here is the just with the LUT. And to me, it has a little bit more, it's warm, but I think my skin complexion isn't right. Like there's definitely a little bit more green and yellow in there. This is me being able to color myself. The best way to check your skin tone is again to go to that opacity and make the triangle because your eyes can deceive you. So you want to just go and check. So this, it's not bad. It has a little bit more yellow, but it's not bad right so now let's do the one that we colored ourselves and see about that one so here let's make it and see if this has a little too much red this is actually on the line so again you don't want to just go off of like what you see you want to check your graphs you want to make sure that your graphs is telling you things because again, as long as you always check your graphs, it doesn't matter where people are looking, whether it's their phone, their computer, their TV, as long as your graphs is saying that you're good, then you're good. But if you're just looking and trying to make sure that you're great, it may look great on your monitor, but to somebody that's watching in some other way, it may not. So always make sure you're going off of your graphs. So this would be the final, and this is pretty much what you all see on YouTube. So we did a good job guys. Hopefully that helped you out. I feel like, again, like once you create your own steps and your own process of what that looks like, whether you're in Premiere or whether you're in DaVinci or whether you're in Final Cut, I think overall learn your process and learn your workflow. And from there, hopefully I helped you all. Um, my goal was not to tell you how to color, but more so learning a process of color. And hopefully I did a good job on that. If you guys have any questions, please leave them down below. Thank you all so much for watching. Make sure that you like it, make sure that you share it, and make sure that you are subscribed to my YouTube channel. Thank you all so much for watching. I love you and I'll see you in the next video.